Step into the movie and listen to the song of time. Hello, everyone. I am Leng Jun. Emperor Gaozong of the Southern Tang Dynasty had a daughter, named Princess Hanyang. It is said that this woman was glamorous and beautiful, and was famous for her beauty throughout the country. Later, the princess's temperament changed drastically because of the early death of her husband. As long as there was a handsome young man she liked, she would try to recruit him into her mansion. Princess Hanyang would brutally kill the young man after the two had sex. It is said that every time she killed a person, she would draw a portrait of the victim. The death of Princess Hanyang was also very dramatic. One day, she found out that her new lover and her maid had an affair, and she angrily tortured the two and threw them into a deep lake. Soon. She contracted a strange disease and died, and was buried on the Hanyang Mountain. Thousands of years later, the ancient kingdom of the Southern Tang had long been destroyed. The tomb of Princess Hanyang was left unattended, and gradually exposed in the wilderness. After the princess died, she did not go into reincarnation. Instead, she practiced in a coffin and became a skeleton banshee. She would transform into a young and beautiful woman, appearing in the middle of the night in the deserted mountains to lure the mortal men passing by, and eat their hearts, peel off their skins, and trap them in a portrait. On this day, the princess repeated her old tricks, holding a red umbrella, and pretending to say that her parents were killed by robbers, and she had nowhere to go. She succeeded in bewitching a young man. Soon after the young man brought her back to his residence, he was killed by the banshee. His younger sister Xi Menyan, the prettiest lady in Jiangnan, was also killed. The banshee also snatched Xi Menyan's appearance, and since then committed crimes in the identity of Xi Menyan. Thirty years later, a scholar Wang Ziyu accidentally saw the portrait of Xi Menyan and immediately fell in love with her, saying. How could there be such a beautiful woman in the world? I want to meet her, even at the cost of my life. But Wang Ziyu is actually a married man. His wife Chen Ying is gentle and virtuous, but she is infertile, which made Ziyu's mother quite unhappy, and urged him to take concubines, thus continuing the family of Wang. But Ziyu looked down on ordinary women, yet his mother put pressure on him every day. And he was laughed at for his wife's fertility when he went out to drink with his friends. His mood fell to the bottom at that time. When he staggered home, he was attracted by some ethereal sounds of a chin, so he followed the sounds to a cabin. When the door opened, he found there were many portraits of men inside, and there was a half-dressed beauty lying on a bed. That was the banshee Xi Menyan. Who was beloved by Ziyu in the daytime? Seeing that the prey had entered the trap, the banshee pretended to be offended, and made Ziyu to be responsible for her. I am just a maiden who has not yet been married. You see my body today. If this incident get out, how can I live? Ziyu looked at this beauty obsessively, and immediately proposed to marry her as a concubine. The goal was achieved. The banshee was no longer reserved. She said that she was a maiden just now, but seduced Ziyu onto the bed in the blink of an eye. After a romantic night, Ziyu soon married Xi Menyan. Before consummation, Xi Menyan made three requirements to Ziyu. Firstly, they cannot light the lamp when they have sex. Secondly, after having sex, they have to sleep in different rooms. Thirdly. He is not allowed to enter her room at night. Faced with these weird requests, Ziyu, who was already excited, did not think they were unreasonable, and fully agreed. The next day, Xi Menyan aggressively demonstrated to Ziyu's wife Chen Ying. She laughed at her for her fertility first, and then gave Chen Ying a painting unkindly. Seeing that the master was bullied, the private maid on the side. Took the painting and hurriedly took it to the kitchen and burned it. Unexpectedly, the painting exudes an unpleasant stench. The little maid realized that Shi Menyan might be a monster, 
and hurried to Chen Ying's room to remind her. Chen Ying was a kind and gentle woman, and did not believe the maid's words. Zi Yu had been very proud since he married such a beautiful woman, but he was not surrounded by happiness, but the ill omen of monster. A profound Taoist disciple saw the black aura on his body, and reminded him, "You're entangled in evil spirits. I'm afraid you are going to have some fatal experiences recently. If there is anything unexpected in the future." You can find me at Qingchen Temple in the west of the city. Zi Yu thought that the Taoist was a liar and did not take it seriously, but the attendant felt something wrong, so he hid quietly under Xi Men Yan's bed at night, intending to find it out. It was a pity that he didn't have the hero's aura, so he was killed by the banshee. The next day, the attendant's body was thrown in front of Chen Ying's room. Everyone thought she was the murderer. The old lady didn't like her at first, so she directly reported to the official to drive her out of the Wang family. Fortunately, Zi Yu still had a little conscience, begging his mother to keep his wife. Xi Men Yan saw that Zi Yu still had feelings for Chen Ying, so she was quite upset. And implied that Chen Ying was a banshee, but Zi Yu didn't believe it at all. So she started to do bad things secretly at night. She changed into the appearance of Chen Ying and killed a maid in the mansion. She also deliberately let people see her doing that, trying to completely drive Chen Ying out. Fortunately, Chen Ying noticed something wrong and escaped early. She finally believed that Shi Men Yan was a banshee. And decided to investigate her secretly to reveal her true feathers. At this time, under the instigation of Shi Men Yan, people in Wang Mansion all believed that the oldest young mistress was a harmful banshee, except for one person. That was Zi Yu's younger brother, who was upright and resolute. He had never got attracted by the enchanting Shi Men Yan, and always believed that his sister-in-law Chen Ying is innocent. In order to get rid of him, Shi Men Yan deliberately led him to her lair, and then used her beauty trick again. But she never thought that this dull man didn't have a bite at all, which forced Shi Men Yan to kill him directly. This scene was seen by Chen Ying, who had been following Shi Men Yan. She was so scared that she ran away, but she was not a match for the banshee and was knocked out. When Chen Ying woke up. She was already in the yard of Wang Mansion, with the body of Zi Yu's brother lying next to her, and a knife in her hand. This time, it was all clear now. Zi Yu no longer believed in Chen Ying, and directly called officials to arrest her, and was about to send her to jail. Chen Ying didn't think about her own situation, but worriedly told Zi Yu that Shi Men Yan was a banshee, that he should be careful. But now. Zi Yu couldn't listen to Chen Ying's truthful words. When his wife was put in prison, Zi Yu was also quite uncomfortable about it. He couldn't accept that his gentle and kind wife turned into a murderous demon in just a few days. The officer reminded him, "This matter is still quite strange. Your wife killed several people in only a few days, which is quite unbelievable." It cannot be done by an ordinary person. Zi Yu told the officer that Chen Ying is no longer what she used to be, and she is a banshee now. The officer said in amazement, "Who made this kind of remarks?" After learning that it was Shi Men Yan that had proposed it, he felt that Shi Men Yan was the monster. He reminded Zi Yu to distinguish right from wrong and never be blinded by her. Hearing this. Zi Yu suddenly remembered the words of the Taoist not long ago, so the officer quickly decided to ask the Taoist for help and get rid of the banshee. The next day, the officer released Chen Ying due to insufficient evidence, and asked her to call for help from the Taoist. After the Taoist heard about Chen Ying's experience, he immediately understood that this banshee was the enemy he had been chasing. It turned out that the Taoist was the servant of Shi Men's family that the banshee had harmed thirty years ago. When he witnessed the young master and the young lady being killed by the banshee, 
he had since devoted himself to Taoism to practice with great concentration in order to avenge his masters. The Taoist asked Chen Ying to lead Ximen Yan into the Taoist temple and leave the rest to him. On the other side, after Ximen Yan succeeded in killing people consecutively, she became more unscrupulous and even killed Zi Yu's mother with the canvas in broad daylight. When Chen Ying came to the door, she was looking at her painting triumphantly. When she heard that Chen Ying burned all the paintings in her collection, she became so angry that she immediately followed her to the Qingchen Temple. Upon seeing this, the Taoist called out his sword and swung it towards the heart of the Banshee, but was beaten back by her with a wave of hand. Then he slapped again. The Banshee immediately flashed in stealth. The Taoist suffered a kick and was seriously injured. This Banshee has become a devil because she has absorbed the spirit of many people recently. Now only the Demon Slayer and the inextinguishable candle that assembles the spirit fire of heaven and earth can defeat her. The trouble is that the inextinguishable candle has been lost, and the Banshee was injured just now. And now it was very likely for her to find a young man's heart to heal herself. In this way, Zi Yu is in danger. Chen Yin immediately ran home regardless of her own safety and reminded Zi Yu to beware of Ximen Yan. Unexpectedly, Zi Yu didn't appreciate her kindness at all and still turned her away. Chen Yin thought of committing suicide to prove her innocence desperately. The Taoist came in time to stop her. The Taoist had already thought of a way to subdue the Banshee. The inextinguishable candle can be replaced by the scorching fire of the human heart. It requires one person voluntarily to go into the flames and turn himself into the wick of the inextinguishable candle. Chen Ying immediately decided to sacrifice herself. Then the Taoist sent his little apprentice to give Zi Yu a demon mirror and asked him to use it to face Ximen Yan at night so that he could see the truth. With the demon mirror, Zi Yu finally saw the true form of Ximen Yan. He was frightened in cold sweat and staggered to Qingchen Temple to ask for help. But at this time, Chen Yin had voluntarily entered the flames and turned herself into an inextinguishable candle. Zi Yu cried loudly at the fire, but it was too late to regret. Finally, he cooperated with the Taoist to lead Ximen Yan out. The Taoist took out the Demon Slayer and severely wounded her. And then people followed closely to the side of the Banshee's coffin. They took out the inextinguishable candle and burned her into ashes. The newly compiled Liao Zai Zhi Yi, painted skin bride, adapted from the story of Liao Zai Zhi Yi, but whether it's screen production, casting or editing, and story logic was not quite satisfactory. So you might as well just watch this commentary. It is not recommended to watch the original film. The protagonist's experience also warns us. You must be cautious about those easy romantic encounters. There is absolutely no free lunch in the world. Blindly lusting for beauty often has to do with pain. That's all for today's movie sharing. I'm Lin Jun. See you next time.